So um, if you have moved around in different areas, in different estates, and also probably in your house, or probably at your friend's place, or probably just moving around the neighborhood, you must have seen something like this that you see actually on the picture. Where you see there is some bit of chalk that is actually appearing on the brickwork, it's appearing in different ways here and there. Now, I want us in this video to understand what actually is causing that, what exactly is happening. Because you see, these things sometimes you take them for granted, but until you understand the science of how something is happening, it is hard to solve an issue unless you understand the science of what exactly is happening okay so in this video we are actually going to discuss um, what is actually causing that and how we can avoid that in our construction okay what's going on guys welcome back to this channel that's all about architecture engineering and construction and they also all about bettering the african narrative so i hope that you enjoy this video if you are new to this channel please subscribe to the channel so that you can get more content that is related to architecture engineering and construction and also based on the african narrative and also if you are a returning subscriber thank you very much for watching thank you very much i hope you're actually benefiting from it which i believe i strongly believe you are because you'd have unsubscribed already okay so uh without wasting a lot of your time i'll try to make the video as short as possible and i'll head right into the video okay so now like i always say in scenarios like this it is difficult to understand what is going on without understanding going a bit into the basic chemistry that we studied in in high school at least not at the university but in high school and actually in the all level part of our high school at least you don't have to have done a lot of chemistry to understand this of course i'll make it as simple as possible for the layman to understand i'll make it as plain as possible so if there are any formulas involved if there are any equations involved you don't have to cram those equations you don't have to memorize anything like that I just want you to understand what is happening so that you have an idea of what exactly is happening um, to avoid things like this in the future at least if you are to embark on your construction project uh, but like i always say in my videos um, i don't i cannot claim to know everything for god's sake i'm only half a decade of experience in this industry but uh, whatever i know i really come here to freely share it with you so that you can learn from this and also have an increase in the knowledge if you're an engineer out there or you're an architect or you're an artisan or whatever you are okay so anyway i will head right into the video so i want us to understand these things first of all we have cement and then we have water and then we have stones we have aggregate that is what we generally use to make our concrete and also our mortar okay so what happens when you're actually going to come to build you have to mix cement with sand and stones and water but the chemical reaction that actually gives us that hard substance that you see is a reaction between cement and water okay now when cement reacts with water they form two main elements um, you don't have to cram the formulas that you see on the screen but we have calcium silicates being formed and also you have calcium hydroxide which is being formed now the calcium silicates are the strength giving elements of the concrete okay and then the calcium hydroxide is really just a byproduct of the reaction i mean just like a chemical reaction happens and then there's a byproduct that is calcium hydroxide just to create a chemical balance of the whole thing okay now the strength giving elements the calcium silicate is really good and then you have the calcium hydroxide which is really a useless element really does not contribute anything to the strength of the concrete or of the mortar in this scenario so uh, because this calcium hydroxide is a bit unstable uh, it leaches out through the concrete and leaches out to the surface and is, as it comes to the surface uh, that is where it meets a lot of exposure to the external environment where we have humid air we have carbon dioxide we have oxygen and all that okay so as it keeps on raining we have salty we have salty rain we have acidic rain we have things like that we do not really have much control over what kind of rain is going to at least rain okay um so this calcium hydroxide actually happens to react with the, with the carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide can be just the carbon dioxide that is just roaming roaming around the air or it can be the dissolved carbon dioxide in the water in rain water now when these two react they actually form what they call calcium uh, calcium carbonate now the other name for calcium carbonate is actually chalk okay so this calcium carbonate um also called chalk is actually the same as the chalk that we even used used in our primary schools on the blackboards so that is also chalk okay that's why you, that's why you see if you can look at the two there is really a very good level of resemblance all that is calcium carbonate 
Now, um, that calcium carbonate, this whole process whereby this calcium hydroxide uh, reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air to form the calcium carbonate or the chalk is what is called efflorescence. So uh, that is the white substance that you actually see on the surfaces of those bricks. Okay. So now, more of the strength giving elements have to react further to create more calcium hydroxide to create a balance. Okay. Now, over a long period of time, that reduces on the strength of the concrete because the strength giving elements are being reacted away to create a chemical balance. That is why it affects you over a long period of time. Of course, that should not uh, should not really take uh, a short period of time. When I say a long period of time, I mean probably 25, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, depending on how severe the situation is. That is why it's very important when you are choosing the materials that you are actually going to use for construction. It, it's very important the brand of cement that you use because some of those chemical tests have not been done on different uh, brands of concrete, on different brands and different types of of cement to at least give us something good on the market even though they are approved even though they are actually approved by the national bureau of standards and things like that the best way to avoid this is a lot of workmanship issue involved there in how we mix even in, in the quality of water that we use for mixing the concrete even in the exposure conditions how you finish the concrete how you waterproof the concrete and things like that because concrete itself is actually made to be it's actually supposed to be waterproof okay but because of the workmanship that happens here and there, it is not necessarily waterproof. But the most important thing in this scenario is choosing the right brand of cement, okay? I'm not here to market anyone, so I'll not be going into what is the right brand of cement. <laughs> Probably if you, if, you, if you are interested, you might want to inbox me and uh, I don't want to be in the business of tarnishing anyone who is not producing good cement or not producing bad cement. But in case you want to know the, the right brands of cement that you can use, there are quite a number of good brands on the market, even though they are also brands that are not really good. But it's very important not go for cheap cement if you are going to build for longevity okay otherwise thank you very much guys for watching i hope you enjoy this video uh please if you enjoy this video let me know down in the comment section if you have a question or a concern on any or a concern or anything like a contribution you can also add it into the comment section thank you very much guys for watching and have yourself a good time i'm darwin